Hello friends, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Again, welcome back to my channel. So we started our journey uh, from the CAN fundamentals where I covered the CAN basics. I talked on the different frames, errors, as well as I talked on the entire frame structure, current trends and the future trends in the CAN fundamental knowledge sharing session. Then in the last session, I talked on the CAN analyzer tool. So this tool is used for analyzing the CAN data transmitting the CAN messages, logging the CAN uh, network messages uh, in the vehicle. So that I covered uh, in a CAN analyzer tool basics. So continuation with this CAN knowledge, today I'm gonna cover on the CAPL programming. Basically, CAPL is a CAN access programming language. Sometimes it is called communication access programming language also. It is a programming language which is based on the C programming. It is an event driven language and is used exclusively within the PC based tool environments of a CAN analyzer and CAN away from the vector. CAPL is a procedural programming language similar to the C, which was developed by a vector informatic. Execution of the program blocks is controlled by the events. CAPL programs are developed and compiled in a dedicated browser. This makes it possible to access all of the objects contained in the CAN database file which contains messages, signals, environment variables, as well as the system variables. In addition, CAPL provides many predefined functions to support users. It is used to access the CAN protocol with the logical operations. With this, it is possible to simulate anything on the CAN network using the script code, which is almost like a C programming. The script can be used with a vector CAN OE and a vector CAN analyzer tool. So with this, today I'm gonna cover you on how you can transmit, receive, how you can see the different operations in the CAPL scripting. Before jumping to in detail about the CAN programming, this is our agenda. We're gonna talk on introduction to the CAPL. Then we'll go to the data types of the CAN. Then I will cover on key procedures. What are the different even handlers? Then what are the operators? CAPL browser, and then we will jump to the live example where I will cover transmit and receive of the CAN messages. So with that, let's start with the introduction of this CAPL. So basically, as I said, CAPL is a programming language and it is similar to the C programming. Sequential, sequential execution and the syntax is almost equal to the uh, C programming. And this is event based. It is not an interrupt driven language. It's very important. What are the different events I will cover in a couple of minutes. But just remember it is an event based language, not an interrupt driven language. So CAPL programs are created using an integrated development environment, and that is called a CAPL browser, where you can create CAPL scripting, put the logic, receive the messages, send the messages, everything is done in the CAPL browser. So it is a direct access to signal and system variables and diagnostic parameters. With the help of this browser, you can have access to all these variables. So if you have created your DLL with the help of CAPL scripting, it is possible to link the user created DLLs in the CAPL. So this is just start and the introduction, basic introduction about the CAPL scripting. But what are the different data types used in the CAPL when you are working on the CAN? So these are the different data types used. Majorly integers, floating points, single character, message variable and time variable. These two are very important and these two are varying when we compare with the C programming. Mostly these are used for in the CAPL scripting. So integers are very common, very well known, signed, unsigned, two types. And based on these are the keywords and the blue, that's integer, long, int64, byte, word, chord, byte, double word, float. And these are the length of the bits. If I am saying it's an integer, signed integer, then length is 16 bit. Again, for the floating, float and double, length is 64 bit, 64 bit. Message variable. Message is a keyword. 
with the help of this you can receive a can messages or you can transmit a can messages so this is keyword and used for creating your can message time variable when i simply use the timer that means it indicates or it defines in terms of the seconds when i put ms before the timer that means whatever the events i am going to use along with this ms timer that works in the millisecond so let's jump and see what are the key procedures very commonly used key procedures on key again on key is event what is event why it is used definitely will get clear in the coming minutes so on key and if i just in a single quote put a b c whatever letter i put uh, and as soon as you put that specific letter from the keyboard it um start sending messages or act on that event when i put double quote and simply leave it blank so it responds to the space bar even if i put hexadecimal 20 on key event it acts for the space bar also that means whatever i will return or i will write inside this on key event it will get executed by pressing space bar by pressing space bar here and by pressing a specific letter i put down a that means if i press a on the keyboard whatever the event is written down inside this on key will get executed similarly for f1 control f2 page down page up button also also home key and this is a universal if you put star pointer that means for any key it responds or responds but what are the event handlers there are different event handlers if you see here this picture is taken from the actual capel browser on bus event can event then the j1 and 39 system events on on key this on key event we just talked earlier then pre start pre stop start stop measurement different events are there But out of that this five are most used commonly used and very important when i say start up measurement that means as soon as i start my measurement uh, this whatever the event you want to execute you have to write inside this on start event message received on message if i want to receive this message or process process something on this uh, 1 2 3 identifier message this is the way to write on message event signal change if you want to work on the signals on signal event is used time event to define the timer the key press on key if i put nothing only the space bar that means if i press the space bar from the keyboard from my laptop or my desktop whatever the event written down inside this on key it will get executed so these are the common events common handlers used in the capel scripting now what are the different operators where you can use and do the programming so these are the different operators addition subtraction multiplication division increment decrement by one then the module where you can use the model modular division and find the remainder so it returns basically the remainder of the division less than greater than equal to logical ending logical or not bitwise ending bitwise or so these are all the operators as like c this capel script supports now until now we talked on basic introduction of the capel scripting different data types uh, used in the can capel scripting what is on key procedures what are the different event handlers and we also talked on the operator now let's start actually looking for the capel capel scripting and the capel browser before jumping to the live demo this is how the capel browser looks if i if you open the capel browser you see this side is a browser tree where you see what are the event system events you are working on so this is a browser tree uh, which shows where you are working what are the events your handlers you are working on or what is directory what is your um, name of the file everything it is it appears uh, here so this is a browser tree this is a editor window here you write down your programming if you want to create the messages receive the messages define the messages everything the programming happens here and this is a capels functions 
these are the ready-made event handlers. You just have to pull that or drag that into the editor and write your code. So this is the capital function window, and this is a compiler window, which shows you if you write your code and hit this compile or this compile, compile all our specific portion of the code compile, then it shows whether it contains any warning or error. So this is very useful before jumping to the online or running your capital scripting. It is very important. You need to compile your code, look for the errors and warning. Uh, you have to rectify that errors and then you have to go for online. So I have covered introduction, data types, key procedures, event handlers, operators, and also we have seen the capital browser. So let's start with the live examples. Now what I will show in the live example, I will show you how you can simply display the message with the help of write function. Then I will show you uh, how you can create the message and transmit that using the capital scripting on the both channels, channel one, channel two. So that's very easy. In very simple language with a very basic, I will show you how you can transmit the CAN messages, how to receive the CAN messages and what is the process and how you can modify the different can messages how to process whatever the message you received how you can modify that message on a signal or on a specific byte that's also possible so basically the major point here is to this transmit and receive because this is based on the application if you want to put some conditions like if else or case statement everything is possible here so let's start Let's jump to the tool now. In the last session, I talked on the Canalizer tool. This is analysis window. This is a transmit branch, and this is online offline mode selector. Now, I'm online now. If I hit this, you see here, no any errors appears here, and uh, I'm online, so I will stop this. Let's start from the beginning. What I will do, instead of going here, because my tool is not connected actually to the CAN network in the vehicle. So what I will do, instead of simulating CAN messages into the transmit branch, I will go for the analysis branch. So either you can come here and put down program node, or you can come here on the hotspot, right click of the mouse and put down the program node. So I will do here, I'll come to the trace. Then the next step is insert program node. Once you come here, what do you have to do? You have to configure that. If already created file, you can configure it. Otherwise, you can just double click on this, open the browser and start writing down your code. So let's start. I already have created the templates for you. Let's open that template and talk on that. So this is the code I have prepared for you. Okay. So how that window looks like. This is how your capital window looks like. Okay. So as I explained earlier, so this is your editor window. This is your capital function. This is your output window where you can see all the message and this is uh, event uh, window where you can see all the events and everything. So. Uh, which includes uh, everything. This is a browser tree, basically browser window where you can see where you are working on. Okay. So we'll start with um, from the beginning. So let's say this is include means uh, here you can include any another capital scripting. If you have any another capital script written, you can include that. You just put down include and provide the path that capital scripting will get included here. Variable, that means here you have to write down the variable um, which are you are interested. I'm just put down here the integer with the value of 100. So what I'm doing here, I'm defining and declaring the integer with the value of 100. Now, this is very simple way to send the message, but before sending the message, you have to define that message. So what I have done, the message is a keyword. Okay, so what I will do, simply what you have to do, let's say message. If I say message, let me undo this. 
And if I come here, enter, and if I say message, you see it's a keyword. Here you can define your message. So this is how keyword is always highlighted by a blue color. So I have defined 0x101 is identifier of message, and the name of that message is a message one. This is a name of the message. You can put anything. If you want to put uh, a sample message, anything you can put. But this is very important. This is identify. What is the format for defining the message? Keyword message, identify, and the name. Put down the um, this semicolon later that. I have defined here the two messages, but the difference you see here, here is nothing, and here I have put down the X. That means this is an extended identifier, and this is a standard identifier. So in variable, you have to define your variables, define your messages, and define your timer. Why timer? Because I want to send the message on the two events. One is I want to send the message periodically, and the second is I want to send the message on event, and that is on key. If you see here, on key. Very simple, if I come here in the can, and uh, if I, in the system, if I say, on, on key, I, if I just pull here, so it shows which key, I will simply say on key A, right? In the single quote, I'll write it down on key A or something like that. So this is how you can write um, the on key event. Very simple, drag and drop. So already we have write down that event here, just below on key event. Okay, so what is this on start? On start means if you see here uh, on the uh, right side of your function in the capital function, on start event is there. That means as soon as you start your uh, running your code, this capital script enter into that and start executing whatever you have written down. So what do you have to do here? If you want to display some matches, I am just showing the message. Welcome to the capital programming. Then what I did, I just declared here and initialized one integer. I am printing that here. That's it. So write is the window which works as a printf as like in the C programming. Very simple. Now, it is not necessary to write here. I can write here, here, somewhere, but just or just I have entered in the on start event. Sometimes you can pre-start, sometimes pre-stop. That means before starting or even when you stop measurement or on specific timer, that way you have to use these system events or the system event handlers. So here, what I have done, the message one, I have used the keyword can and put down the one. What is the, does this mean? This means, this means, I will put the comment here, two backward slashes. The comment is, Message one will be transmitted on can one channel. So here I'm defining the channel basically. How I can define the channel? Write down the name of the message. I will write it again for you. Let's say I deleted this. Okay, so how I can write it? Very simple. You just have to write down the name of the message and then what you have to do? You have to put down the keyboard, keyword can and just assign the number of the channel. That's it. This is done. Very simple. So I want to operate or process my message one on can one. And I want to process my uh, this message two on can two. Deliberately, I used two channels to make you aware how we can use um, or two messages on the different network. So this is CAN1 and CAN2. So this is channel one and this is channel two of the CAN tool. And here what I am doing, if you want to send your message periodically, you have to set the timer. So again, set timer is here somewhere you can find um, here. So set timer, what you have to do? Just you have to pull it and uh, on timer. So on, on timer is the event here. You have to just pull it and you start writing down your 
um, event, whatever the event you want to execute inside that. But when you want to send your message periodically, how you can use the timer? The first you have to set the timer. Okay, here I used keyword MS. That means my timer will get executed on the millisecond. If I use M, delete the MS and I only use the timer, that means whatever the time events I will get execute or I will use, it will work on the seconds. So I will use the millisecond timer. Okay, here I am in defining that. I'm setting the timer. What is the definition? What is the name of my timer? My timer is my name over my timer and 10 is the 10 millisecond. I want it get executed on the 10 millisecond. So this is what I set the timer and I will set the timer on the on start event or you can even set the timer on pre start, but you cannot um, uh, set the timer on the pre stop or the stop measurement. You have to set your timer at the beginning. OK, and then you have to call your timer. When you call your timer, you just have to use this on timer. Um, event OK, when you pull and drag here, you have to write down the name of your timer and write down your message. How you can define the message? Now, I have defined the two messages here. If you see here, message one and message two. I'm making the message two as a periodic, and I'm sending that message two on the CAN two. OK, so on CAN two network, I have defined my messages length. How many bytes I want to send? I want to send eight bytes in my CAN frame on CAN two network. So this is DLC means a data length code. So this is a syntax name of the message dot DLC and write down the length. So for the next message, if you see, I set the four. Here I'm setting the eight. I wanted to make you clear the use of this function DLC. That's what I made two messages. One is a periodic and one is on um, keyword event. OK, so what I'm doing. In my first byte, I'm setting the value 11. Then on the second byte, I'm setting the value of this and the third byte, I'm setting value of this. This way, the eight bytes are set. If I say byte zero, that means the first byte of my CAN frame and byte seven is the last byte. That is the eight byte of the CAN frame. If I, I define this message and I simply say four year, only four bytes will be transmitted in the CAN frame. It is picked of what you are defining here. So what I did initially, I said, the length of my data byte. Then I said the data byte. I assigned the name of uh, the identifier, uh, name of the message. I assigned the identifier. Then I assigned the channel where I want to send, and I started defining that data inside the data field. This is a keyword to send the CAN message output. Whatever the message you want to send, now I want to send a message to. So that's what very simple output, and in bracket, you just set the name of that message. Again, you have to call your timer. So what will happen as soon as you're this, uh, this on timer, that means your timer will get executed. You will, it will enter into this, and uh, every 10 millisecond, your message will get executed into the network. So this is how. You have to use your timer. Initially, you have to set, call the on timer event, define whatever you want to send periodically inside that on timer event. And at the end, again, you have to invoke the timer. That's how you can send the periodically message. So I have got the one part where you can send the message periodically. Now, how you can receive the message? Very simple, very, very simple on message event. What do you have to do? Here you can see inside the can on message, right? If you are aware of the error, if you are aware of the bus up state, if you are aware of uh, any passive state, you can use that handlers as well. Just have to pull, drag, and if I come here, I have to right click on this and insert that specific message from the database file. It is very important when you are working on, if you are working on receiving the messages, you should assign 
the database file to um, a specific channel. Where to assign database file? In the canal analyzer tool in database management, you have to assign the database file to the specific channel. Otherwise, what will happen? You will not able to see that messages here. This message is from the database file basically. So you should have the database file. If you want to receive the message, you must need a database file. So what I have done, I have one database file and out of that, I want to read this message and I want to process that. If the first byte of this scan message is a one, I'm saying the response is expected. Otherwise, response is not expected. But as I said, I'm not online. So I cannot see this message into the network where my tool is connected. So I will, my capital scripting will not execute this event. It will not enter into this event. But this code is specifically for you. If you want to receive any messages, this is the simple, very simple syntax you have to use. You have to just drag this, click, left click on this event, pull this, drag this here, right click here, and just go to the database symbol and go to the message. Here, you go to the message and select which message you want to um, uh, receive, or even you can go for the signals as well, which signal you want to receive. So that's possible, very simple. So how you can receive the message that I have covered. So this part covers the receiving the messages. Till now, I have covered how you can periodically send the message, how you can receive the message and do some processing. So what I'm doing processing here, I'm just reading a specific um, byte of that message and then checking that uh, message and just displaying some messages here. Uh, that means uh, either your response is expected or not expected, but suppose you want to read engine speed. In the second byte, if you know the engine speed is coming, you can set the byte two here, let's say byte two, check specific value. And if you want to shut down or send any signal, you can do that. Excuse me. <coughs> so that's it. Uh, so very simple how you can receive the message. As compared to the transmitting message, receive message is very simple. And the last, I, I wanted to show you on key event. What I have done, I set uh, the key as a one. So on on key event is available here. <clears throat> so you have to just pull from here and drag here and write down your um, key, whatever the key you want to write here and write down your logic inside that. What I am doing, as soon as I enter or press the keyword A, I'm displaying the message that key A is pressed. And on that key press, on that A key, I wanted to send one message. Which message I want to send? The message one. Earlier I showed periodically message two and here I'm sending the message one. So output is the function with the help of that you can send the message into the network. Very simple. But you must be very much clear. Want to send periodically or want to send on a specific event? Okay, so here I have defined the data length. Here I have defined just four. Instead of going for the eight, here I define the eight. Yeah, I have sent here four. So if you see the message one with the identifier 101, you will see only four bytes in the, into the network. And I'm just outputting that message uh, on a uh, key press A. Very simple. So what I will do, first step, I will compile this. If any error or warning there, it would show here. Let's let's create some errors or warning. I have just deleted this and I have compiled this. So you have three errors and it will take you where that error is. It will show you the line and um, which column. So everything is uh, possible. It will show you in this line you have to go and um, correct your error. So I will compile this now. So zero errors and uh, zero warning. So now. We will jump back to our tool. Here I have assigned my uh, couple scripting and here is my trace window. Here is a statistics where you can see all the statistics happening on your network. You can choose the specific 
channel can one can two you can set both also i have covered this in my last session basics of the canonizer in that session i have covered the can statistics window can trace window and this is a right window here you can see everything what is happening if any error into the canonizer tool it will show you here if something with the system it will show here and if something is happening with the capital scripting it will show you in the right window what i will do now i will just hit run, run. so now you see on can2 i'm online now the message is coming whatever the message i have defined in the capital scripting that is running here right let's go back to the capital scripting i can see on can2 the periodic message is coming let's check on can2 i'm sending periodic message with a length of 8 yes the timer is for message 2 right what is the identifier of the message 2 it's 102 and it is extended right so let's check let's go back to the tool and see here yes it is extended 102 on can channel 2 yes that means i'm doing right steps now i have defined the two messages what is the another message that's a 101 and that is a standard the x should not be there so this is identifier field this is channel assignment and here it shows the periodicity if i hit on this delta it will show you a 10 millisecond your message is going into the network and it's online basically now i'm gonna going to press a so here before pressing a you see here welcome to capital programming so and here i have displayed the integer that is defined i let's go back to the programming here i defined the 100 as soon as i start i'm welcoming saying that i uh, welcome to the capital programming and 100 is a decimal number and here is the value so this is get executed right this is also get got executed now i have to execute this so what i have to do i have to just press key a so i will press key a now till now i have not pressed let's i have pressed so you see the message is coming and it is stopping why it is stopping because i am not pressing any again you see here the key a is pressed where it is written here it is written key a is pressed right again i will press the key so now why it is disappeared because message is not active now if i press a again the message is coming if i press a again the message is coming and you see here can message is coming as well as the display message is also coming there so that means the message is going into the network on the can one with the identifier 101 and you see the dlc is four and only four bytes are sent here and here the dlc is eight data length code is eight and you are sending the eight bytes of the information going back to the code if i just change this to four for the periodic message though i have defined the eight bytes i just changed the dlc four so what will happen now very interesting what will happen Though you have defined the eight bytes you will only see the four bytes in the periodic message the name of that message is message two let's see that so let's go back to the tool i will stop this and again i will run this you see here periodic message is coming on can2 with the identifier 102 but what is the length it's a four though you define the eight bytes i can see only four bytes right so this is how very simple it's a very simple language and you can practice looking at my example transmit messages receive messages so i will press a i can see that message is coming now what i will do with this i will just hit on here i will i will stop this hit here and add the filter here okay so channel filter double click on this and this filter is possible to apply in any branch even you can come here and you can put the channel filter also this is a transmit branch this is analysis branch okay if i come here double click here and i i just want to stop the messages coming on the can2 right so what i will do i will click on the can2 and block this stuff let's run this you see no message in the can2 if i press a only can one message is present why the reason is i have stopped sending now let me pass this pass all okay you see the can2 can1 both messages are coming there let's block a can1 i will block can1 so though i press a you see here the message is coming here you see you see here message is coming here but 
you cannot see the message here. The reason is I have used the filter. So this is how the filter works. So it's very simple. And uh, I will just stop this and going back to the couple scripting. So I have covered everything. Uh, we started with the beginning introduction to the capital, then the different data types. So you can do the addition, subtraction, multiplication. You can use the data types like integer, um, uh, character, floating point numbers, message, all different data types you can use. Different key procedures, event handlers, operators. We, we have seen the capital browser. This is a capital browser basically. And this is a browser tree. This is an editor. This is a compiler message. And this is a function window. So I think I have covered everything on the capital scripting. I wish you all the best. You start with the simple message. You, you just go through my message, pause my video. Look, I have def how I define the timer. You write down the timer accordingly. Look, I have set um, the channels. You can set the channel and accordingly. Uh, you can configure your couple scripting and run. I wish you all the best uh, with my uh, learning and I hope uh, this video will definitely help you uh, to basics of your couple scripting. So thanks for watching my videos. If you like this knowledge session, then I at least deserve the like. And if you are new to my channel, please like, share and subscribe. If you have not subscribed it, Please subscribe, like, share with your friends, your family, your office colleagues. That's all for the day. See you later. Then I will make you learn something new. Goodbye and have a nice day. Thank you.